Hello again, my friends. This is Kunita, back on the road once again. And I greet you warmly, warmly in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God. And I welcome you back to the podcast. I hope the road noise isn't too irritating. I've, I've tried to make sure that nothing was open where there could be uh, any wind flowing through or sound, but it doesn't seem to be able to quiet everything down and of course there's all the the road noise in the vehicles but you know I was meaning to speak to you to you earlier today on a subject that I talk about quite often I guess but I got so caught up as I was going down to uh, Oxford and and driving through some of the the hills in southwestern Ohio just the beauty of the uh, of the season. The uh, leaves and the color are all at their height right now. It was a gorgeous uh, sunny day, even if a little cool, but still I uh, stopped the van and just kind of got out and wandered around through. There's some uh, forest areas down here and I pull off into some of the parks and I just enjoy myself and I enjoy the bounty that God has created and the the beauty and, and of the seasons and the change. I don't know. Those of you that don't live in the north, perhaps you just don't see it like I do. But uh, I particularly enjoy the fall and and the coloring and the promise that the fall brings of a renewal. And, And the thought of the beauty of creation that he has laid around us and it and it just brings me back to why would he do this? Why why make things so gorgeous? And it's, it always comes back to the same thing. It's because he loves us. He wants to fill us with joy. To appreciate the handiwork of the living God. And he does this out of love. For love is the very nature of God. You can't go very far, my friends, into walking with God and coming to know God to to see this because every way we have of coming in touch with God is a demonstration of His love. All of creation is a backdrop of love. Just the contemplation of it brings a joy and a thrill to the heart of a Christian. The beauty, the grandeur, the magnificence. It is a reminder of the greatness and the glory of His love. The Word of God that we have is a grand soliloquy of love by the hand of God Himself. All the pages drip, my friends, literally drip with the love and compassion, the mercy and the grace of God, for mercy and grace are merely different faces of love. The coming of the Son of God is the proof of His love, a manifestation in blood of the cost and the depth of His love. Spirit. The Spirit is the confirmation and the guidance of His love. My friends, I hear a lot of people complaining and worrying about the way things are. They they fret and they worry about their retirement, their job, their security. My friends, what I try to tell you over and over is your security. Everything that is of importance rests in the love of Almighty God. Walk in Him. Walk with Him. Come to know Him. And you will find these worries vaporize. They simply disappear. It's been many, many years since since 
since God convinced me, I guess that's the best way to put it, to begin to trust in Him. In the situation I was in at the time, a single parent of a whole batch of little kids, I didn't have much choice. I had no support system, no friends left after the church had expelled me. And uh, I learned, step by step, stumble by stumble, mistake by mistake. But I learned what the word says in God's grand soliloquy is absolutely the truth. You take one step, he provides the guidance for the next. And it works that way. And with each step, you gain confidence in the reality of the loving hand and the guidance of Almighty God. My friends, I can't urge you enough. Take that plunge. Step out, my friends, in trust and in faith. You know, you don't have to worry about what you're going to do 10 years from now. You simply have to turn each day over to the Lord. Our Lord says each day was enough in itself. Give Him today. And in His love, He will give you guidance and grace for tomorrow. And as you trust in this love, and learn to walk in this love, it becomes an empowerment to you. It drives away the things that the evil ones in the society at large push upon you as, as needs for security, things that you are to fret and worry over because that's all we seem to do in this society. But there are those of us who have learned a different way. Would you be surprised to say, I don't, uh, if I were to tell you, I don't have a bank account. I don't have an IRA. I don't have any retirement account or uh, pension funds. I don't have a credit card. Uh, I don't have any of those things. I long ago withdrew from the world and began to depend on Almighty God. I don't go into debt. I live on what I have. And God has always been sufficient to make sure I had what was needed. There's never been a problem in over 20 years. Love works like that, my friends. Those of you who have who have a soulmate, one that you love deeply, you learn to depend on them in such personal, intimate ways that you walk your life without even thinking about them because you know the bond of love that is between you and you have developed a trust and a confidence. I tell you, my friends, with God it is much the same. I have not been blessed with a soulmate in this life. But praise Almighty God. There is a soulmate for eternity that we can have in this life. I can testify to that. I would not be here. I would not have survived were it not for Almighty God. Had I taken the ways of the world, I would have long ago burned out. But the key, and I guess I'm beginning to ramble on here a little bit, so I'll try and close this off. The key, my friends, that I have, the only thing I can tell you is to learn to wrap yourself in the love of God. The love of God is not hard to find. It's everywhere around you if you're only willing to look. Wrap yourself in the arms and the love of Almighty God. Throw yourself upon the altar there within the veil and allow Him to strip away and rebuild. And you 
will see, my friends, the truth that every gift, every gift is a spirit, every gift to you, every grace, all his mercy, are all a manifestation of this wondrous, wondrous, indescribable love. Reach out, my friends. It is there. Amen. I guess what I'm really trying to say however awkwardly or clumsily because I don't have any you know I'm sitting here driving in the van and I don't have any notes what I'm trying to say my friends is when you walk with God on a day by day hourly basis talk things over with him pray generally live as much as is possible within our lives in a state of communion with him and this is much more possible than you think and you envelop yourself within his love there is a sufficiency you will find that God overpowers every other interest every other thing there is a consuming sufficiency in God to where he creates a need and yet fulfills that need as we walk day by day. It is an amazing thing that I find difficult to find words to explain, though I continually try. And many people think I'm nuts when I do it. Uh, nevertheless, it is, it is my calling to tell people of this love, of this amazing thing that I have learned to know this amazing person of the living God and his sufficiency my friends is this freedom that Christ and Paul talked about it is this freedom from the things and the systems and the structures that the world provides for its own security because they have no other security. It's why they fight so hard to keep the monetary systems in order, to keep the masses from rioting. And to the extent that you as a Lamb of God participate in this system is the extent to which you are connected to them and the deeper you involve my friends when the final time comes that you must be pulled out the more difficult the extraction will be I guess that's the best way to put it but you know you can cut loose from all of this because the deepest people who walk closest to God sometimes don't see that these instruments are a manifestation of self that still exists, that doesn't quite trust to turn everything over to God. I mean, I'm going to retire. I'm going to need something, right? I understand, my friends. But to experience this freedom in God and this freedom in Christ, you must learn to live in His sufficiency and not in the power of men. When Christ said, follow me, He wasn't talking about a trek through the woods or along the path through the flower garden. He meant follow him into his death. The reality is, my friends, the freedom that Christ offers you is twofold. You have the freedom to enter into the veil and seek forgiveness through his blood. And you have the freedom to offer yourself a living sacrifice on the altar 
within the veil. These are our freedoms. And only as we partake in these do all the other freedoms of God open up. You see, my friends, freedom in Christ, in reality, is the freedom of a dead man. A dead man cares not what the world thinks. He doesn't care about their systems, their money, anything. He cares about the living God and his relationship to that living God. And here is where God would have us to be. Maybe I get too preachy sometimes. <laughs> I apologize, my friends, but the need I see is vast. I hear the worries, I hear the concerns of people, and these are legitimate concerns for the world. The Lamb of God should be rejoicing. I tell you, my friends, the flesh that died was not sacrificed on the altar to purify it. It was sacrificed to free me from it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, I didn't quite, quite think I could say it like that. Boy, there it just popped right up. Praise God. <laughs> That's the key, my friend, to freedom. Don't you see? This is the life of walking. Wow, kind of exhausted already. This is the life of walking one-on-one, -on -one, daily, enveloped in the sufficiency of the love of Almighty God. And it's there for every lamb, every lamb. But two things are required. You must come into the veil. And you must sacrifice yourself on the altar. This is the meaning of when Paul talks about being a living sacrifice. We live now unto Christ, for we were slain with him. It's all there, my friends. This is the meaning of the circumcision of the heart. It is that slit, that cut on the altar made by the almighty surgeon himself to free us from this covering of flesh and to cast it away. Doesn't make us perfect, friend, my friends. And we feel it deeply when we stray, more deeply than others, for sure. But it does always keep us within the hands of the living God. And I don't know about you, but as I see events coming on, that's where I want to be. You see, the reality in my heart is I serve the living God. I'm already dead. Dead to most of what I see going on around me. I don't really care who wins the election, though I have voted. My spirit lives in, a, in another kingdom. I'm an alien. I'm simply passing through. When I pray and I think and I worry about the things of this country, my spirit says, what is this to you? You live in the realm of Almighty God. Let it go. Let it go. And I guess that's what I'm trying to say to you tonight as I ramble on and try and find a way to wind this down. I'm starting to come into town now. It's getting on about 9.30. It's been a long drive. My friends, 
lay that flesh upon the altar. Take those remaining things of self. As painful as it may be, come out from among them. Come in within the veil. Learn to live within the sufficiency of his love. Step by step. Day by day. Testimony of one one old man crazy in love with God is that it is a wondrous, magnificent journey. Amen. Praise Almighty God, what more can I add? Good night, my friends. Well, one final time, my friends. Hello again. I'm uh, off the freeway now, heading down Rome Hilliard Road, getting ready to turn out on Renner Road to head out towards home. Most of you probably didn't realize that uh, this has actually the uh, third segment of the message tonight. I had to uh, stop in the middle because I ran into a uh, unexpected construction zone where the lanes went from one to three and so everything backed up in a hurry. And I thought perhaps it'd be best if uh, I was concentrating on what I was doing rather than uh, trying to concentrate on what I was saying. Sometimes I can do both, but you know, I'm getting old. There are some times when I can't anymore. <laughs> but as I head home, I want to uh, talk about the music on tonight's show. And, and before I get to that, you know, when I speak to you about something as incomprehensible as the love of Almighty God, it, I always, I always feel like somehow... I didn't say enough or do it justice and 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 as I I pray to God to forgive me the warming in my heart always comes to me with the realization that if my words friends could fully encompass the love of God then my words will be greater than the love of God and we all know that could never be so the simple truth is I simply share the testimony as I know it in my own heart, knowing that my words are inadequate, knowing that no man's words would be adequate, especially someone unlearned. I mean, I, I drive a truck, you know. I simply try to tell you in, in the only way I know how, the truth that I have not come to know in the person that I have come to know. I guess I can't praise it any better than that. Uh, so I better quit trying. Because I always feel like I didn't do enough. <laughs> anyway. The music provided on tonight's show will. Will be and always will be as far as I know. From Zeph and Trish Daniel. We opened with Do You Get It? And uh. I'm not quite sure what song I'm going to finish by, so I apologize, Zeph, right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm tired. It's going on 10 o'clock. I've been on the road a long time. But you know, when I, when I say to you that I want to thank Zeph and Trish for the use of their music, people, you know, it, it sometimes sounds formal or trite or... And you know it's never meant to be because the truth of the matter is without Zev and Trish and their encouragement uh, these podcasts and my poetry and whatever other way I have had of expressing my faith out to others would, would simply not, uh, would not exist, I don't think. You know all those years ago when the world smashed me down, it smashed me down pretty hard. And when I wound up clinging to Almighty God, I left the world, friends. I left it behind, just me and my little family. And when the time came to reach back out to that world, quite frankly, I found that I didn't know how anymore. And I reached out 
the best I could on the internet. Uh, that's where I was the most comfortable, it seemed. And I, I tried different places and always, always there was the slap down, the rejection when I came to talk about the truth of God as I knew it. But then one day I heard Zeph on the, on, on, on the uh, internet and I found Crazy Lamb and found the most amazing thing. I found a bunch of people just like me who wanted to give it all to the Lord and wanted to live totally wrapped up, totally enveloped in His love. And I found them just when I needed them because I was beginning to think that, that there wasn't nobody else quite like me. I just, because it had been so long since I'd met anyone who had truly given their life to God in every way that they, every way that they knew. All the ones I had met or seen were were playing a game, and I was well beyond games. And to be quite quite frank, I had very little patience with uh, with game players and song and dance men. Uh, I tell them the truth, and and I let them go, and that's usually what happened. But something different happened to Crazy Lamb. I found some people that accepted accepted me and accepted accepted the gifts that God had given me and encouraged them. And when I say thank you, Zeph and Trish, this is what I mean. I mean thank you for giving me giving me a way to reach out to the world again. A way to share what God has put inside my heart to share that I just didn't know how to do before. That's what I mean when I say thank you. So don't think it's disingenuous or trite. There is much more behind it than most people would know. Now I know this is going to make them nervous and squeamish. I got kind of, uh, <laughs> well, sometimes just saying thank you isn't enough. Well, I'm pulling into the uh, pulling into the driveway now, my friends. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening in the Lord. I feel so blessed this evening. This thinking and talking about His love stirs it up in my heart. And just, oh, I wish I had words. Oh God, I wish I had words.